Hi, this is Damien Levesque, owner of Scubalon Creative, film and TV editor and writer-director of the upcoming horror film The Cleansing Hour. Today I want to show you a few examples of how my team and I utilized Boris Mocha Pro and Sapphire during the film's editorial process, how it saved us time, and how it was an invaluable tool that enhanced creativity. We had over 400 visual effects shots in our movie, and over a third of them were screen replacements. And Mocha Pro was an essential tool for making sure that we could get these screen replacements done quickly and have them look really good. Now, Avid has a few tools built into it that allow you to do simple screen comps, but Boris Mocha Pro is a much more fully featured program, and we found this was much easier to work with. Uh, we could work very quickly and get better results all around. So let's just start with this, this uh, shot right here, and this is a very simple screen comp. Character looks up at the screen, and we want to put something on that screen. The way you stack your layers in Mocha Pro is a little bit different from what you would think. Instead of putting the foreground layer, what's going to go on the screen um, on top, you actually are going to put it below the clip that you're compositing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into effects mode and grab Mocha Pro and drop it onto my clip that I'm going to be compositing. Okay. And then in the effect editor, click launch Mocha Pro. And it's helpful to scrub through your shot, see what the shot is doing. It's handheld. And um, you'll notice here at the beginning, because the screen is completely, um, is partially off of the screen, off out of the frame whenever we open it up, um, it would actually be more effective to track this one backwards than forwards. So I'm going to start here on the very last frame and begin by drawing a simple spline shape around the screen. And I'm only going to do four points. And I'm going to close it just by right clicking. All right, and then I'm going to select my points like this, and I'm going to pull these little handles outward so that we have a nice, nice little points, uh, nice little pointy edges instead of rounded edges, and then simply track backwards. Now, as this is tracking backwards, it's actually reading all of the information that's inside of that spline shape. This is a planar tracker. It is not a point tracker like in Avid. So this is a key distinction between the different tools that you have at your disposal. Now, what I can do is I can actually turn on my planar grid and I can see what the track is doing. And I can see that if, it's, uh, if there are any glitches in it or anything like that. And this is a really nice clean track. Now, I'm gonna turn the grid off and I'm gonna turn my surface tool on. Now you'll notice that my surface tool is almost the exact same shade of blue as my screen here. So I'm actually going to change the color of this by going to view overlay colors. And under here, you see points. I'm just going to change this to green and deselect and reselect it. Now I can actually see my surface tool a little bit better. Now we use the surface tool to position our layer on top of the screen. And this is going to be the box inside of which our image goes. So I'm going to begin positioning my corners on the edges. Now, this is going to be a lot easier if I can, first of all, zoom in and also turn on my magnification windows so I can sort of see the exact edge of where I'm putting it. Now, you'll notice I'm going to position this just slightly outside the edge of the frame. Just like so. Okay, and I'll zoom out. And then what we can do is over here on the insert clip menu, I'm gonna drop this down and choose insert layer. And insert layer is the layer below this video in my timeline. So you can see now I've, um, I've put it in there. I've got the uh, image on the screen. Um, it's, it looks pretty good. It's a nice track, but I still think there are a few ways that we can improve this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my last frame and I am going to put a little feathered edge around this to make it a little bit more realistic. Now, one way that I like to do this is by actually using the spline edge as my feathered edge. So if I turn off my surface tool and turn on my Uber key, which is going to change the shape of the spline for the entirety of the shot, let's zoom in and position this right on the edge of the screen. But in order to see this a little bit better, I need to turn my layer off. So I'm gonna set this to none and um, zoom in a little bit more like so and i'm going to also make sure that my magnification windows are on good and let's drag this right here and i'm going to try and nail the edge as our surface using our surface tool we were just outside the edge i want to be right on the edge okay looks pretty good 
Now while I'm zoomed in here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the insert layer back on so we can see it better. And you notice that I'm a little bit outside my spline edge here. So what I wanna do is I want to go under the insert module down here and I want to mask my insert layer that we just turned on using the spline. So I'm going to choose mat for layer one. Now all of a sudden, I'll turn my surface tool off. When you look in, you can see that we are matting the insert using the spline shape. Now, let's make this edge a little bit soft. And over here on the edge width, we can actually set this, let's say two pixels and click set. And now you can see we've just created a soft edge. Alrighty, maybe we can do three pixels. Oh, let's do four. Okay, so now I've got a soft edge. That looks pretty good. Now, the picture looks a little bit flat and we can make this look a little bit more like it's seated in the screen, like it's on actually on the screen. And we're gonna use Sapphire for that. Sapphire and Mocha together. So I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna exit out of the Mocha window. Back in the effect editor, I wanna go open up the module, win module renders, turn on render, and we're going to render the insert composite module. So now we have our screen comped, on, comped in beautifully. Now what I'd like to do is screens, they, grow, they glow a little bit, right? So let's make our screen glow. The first thing I'm gonna do though, for the purposes of working quickly, I want to turn off, this, turn off the module render so that I can see the effect without having to do any additional processing. Under the effect palette, I'm gonna search for an S glow and grab Sapphire S glow and I'm gonna alt drag that on top of my effect. Now you, can, now you can see my entire image is glowing. So well, the first thing I might do is I'm gonna turn up my threshold to limit the glow to the brighter areas of the screen. Okay, now it's still, it's still glowing the entire image, just a little bit less over here than it is over here. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually limit the glow to just the area around the TV. And I can do this using Mocha because Mocha is built into most of the Sapphire plugins. So in the effect editor, I'm going to click edit Mocha. Okay, and we're going to do pretty much the exact same process. I'm going to draw a spline shape around the screen in the shape that I want the glow to be limited to. But I'm gonna use a few more points than I did before. Okay, and I'm gonna select all my points and I'm just gonna round them out a bit and then track backwards. Okay, looks good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to soften our edge by selecting all of our points, switching to the Uber key, and then going over to edge width and I'm gonna type in something pretty big. Let's try 30. We have a pretty good edge on there now. I'm just gonna shrink this and adjust it so that it's maybe a little bit more appropriately sized for this screen. Okay. And now you can see that it stays that same shape for the entirety of the shot. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna exit Mocha. And now you can see that my glow is limited only to my screen. Okay, once I'm happy with that, I can go down to Mocha Pro in my effect editor. I'm gonna turn rendering back on. And now I've got a nice little glow on my screen there. It looks a little bit better. I'm gonna adjust my glow width a bit. That looks pretty good. In addition to doing simple screen comps, you can even do more complex actions with Boris Mocha Pro, like holding out objects that move in front of your screen. This is a great example right here where you can see in the right-hand screen, the left hand holding the phone is actually in front of the screen itself. So instead of just doing a slap comp where you put the image on screen, we can actually cut this out very easily. The point here is, is that we can do this very quickly. So go into your effect mode and grab Mocha Pro and drop it onto the top layer. I've got my footage below. Launch Mocha Pro. And just like before, I'm going to draw a simple shape inside of the screen to track it. And track forward. Now let's zoom in. And turn the surface tool on so we can see where on the screen are we going to place this image. 
I'm going to turn my magnifier windows on so I can see exactly where my edges are. Okay, I can turn my grid on and I can see what the track looks like. Scrubbing through, looks good, no glitches or anything like that. I'm going to turn my grid off and I'm going to turn my surface tool off and then under insert clip, change this to insert layer. Okay, great. Now you can see the layer that was below nicely comped onto the screen. But we still have an issue. Over here, the thumb is still kind of in the way. So we want to cut out the thumb so that it looks more realistic. For now, let's turn our insert layer off and we are going to name our layer. We'll call this one screen and we're going to make a new one and we're going to cut out the thumb. Actually, I'm going to use the magnetic spline tool because it will hug to the edges that it detects. Every time you click, it'll create a new point. With that shape selected, go ahead and select your magnetic spline selection tool again, and then you can turn the detail up or down and have it reduce the number of points that are created. I find that's very useful so that you don't get an overly complicated shape. You might have to do a little bit of cleaning up down here. Um, this is a good example of that. I'm just going to delete this point. We don't need it. And then we might want to soften our edges just a little bit. So I'm going to round them out. Zoom in. Let's track this shape forward. Oh, by the way, turn off the shapes that you don't want to track. This turns off the processing for the other shapes. So only have the gear showing for the layer that you want to track. And then track backwards. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's name our layer two up here. Call this hand. And with the screen selected under the insert module, under masks, choose mat for hand. Okay, well, that's not exactly what we want, but we can invert it. And now when you zoom in, you can see that we've cut out the screen very nicely. And of course, if you want to be particularly ambitious, you can highlight your shape. Don't need our surface tool off, so we're going to turn that off. And turn on your Uber key, and we can actually select our points and then soften the edge a little bit over here to get a more realistic looking edge. Three is maybe not enough. Let's try 10. Okay, so now it matches the focus a little bit better. I'm just going to pull this back a bit. Okay, I'm happy with this work. Let's save. Exit out of Mocha, back under Module Renders, make sure you turn on Render, and we are going to Render, Insert, Composite. Now, if you wanted to put this same image on this screen over here, all you would have to do is, once again, create another shape, turn on your Surface Tool, and Insert Layer, and do the exact same process again. But you don't have to drop another instance of the plugin on your clip to do it. You can do it all within the same plugin. Mocha Pro is also awesome for shot stabilization. Now, this is something you can pretty easily do in any of the NLEs with their built-in stabilization plugins. However, with Mocha, you have quite a bit more control, and that's the reason why I prefer it. In this shot right here, you can see we're on a steady cam, but the camera isn't exactly as steady as we would like. I would like to smooth this out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once again, go into Effect Editor, grab Mocha Pro, drop it onto my shot, and then open it up. Now I need to determine, am I stabilizing to the actor's face? Am I stabilizing to my horizon in the background? Am I stabilizing to you know, the, the moving wall right here? You're going to get different results depending on which part of the image that you track. Now in this case, because I want to create a nice smooth shot, I'm going to, that it shows the background as being steady and level, I am going to actually stabilize using the background over here. All right, and whenever I do this, I want to make sure that the shape that I create doesn't actually have anything that flies in front of it. So I need to watch out for the hair right here. In fact, I'm going to park on this frame and I'm going to make since there it is, I'm going to park on this frame because I want to make sure that I'm drawing a shape that doesn't get obstructed by the hair. Okay, so we'll draw our shape. Any shape will do. Just create a few points, close it by right clicking and track forward. All right. Go back to the last keyframe and then track backwards. Now let's go into the stabilization module. Now when I hit play, automatically you can see that there are some black edges that have appeared. This is because the translation data from the track is being 
applied to my image. Now I can choose to stabilize as little or as much as I want down here by changing this number, this value. If I want to stabilize it more, you can notice that the edges get, the edges get even bigger. If I want to stabilize it less, I won't see as much as the edges. Six feels pretty good. And you'll also notice that in this shot, I'm only stabilizing the X and Y translation. Now I can stabilize rotation and I'm gonna get a little bit different results, but I'm actually pretty happy with the rotation of this image. The background looks level without that, so I'm not gonna turn rotation on. And you can do the same thing with zoom. That'll just create funky results. It doesn't look right, so I'm turning zoom off and leave it like that. Okay, so to get rid of these black edges, we can go over here to borders and center, which will center up the image, obviously. I like that. And then just apply a small zoom to it and Mocha will zoom it just enough to get rid of the edges throughout the entirety of the shot. And that's pretty much it. Very happy with that. Hit save, close Mocha, and then make sure I go over to my module renders, click render and choose stabilize. Now all my stabilization is applied and I can play it back real time in my timeline. Another really cool function of Mocha Pro is the ability to do wire removal. And you'll notice that in this sequence, there is a stunt where um, an actor is thrown over someone's shoulder and there's a wire attached to his back. And this was an ideal opportunity to utilize the remove feature. So we had to do a little bit of work ahead of time just because this one took a little bit more time than just a simple screen comp, but I can show you what I did and it didn't really take that much time in the grand scheme of things. The first step was actually to draw a shape around your wire. And this shape is going to represent, this is the part of the image that we are going to remove. Now I tried tracking this myself using the, use, using the Mocha tracker, but um, you know, it's a dark shot, the lights are flickering. It was very difficult to track, it wouldn't do it. So I just animated all of this by hand. And it really didn't take that long. The shot's something like 20 frames long, 22 frames long. So I had this animated shape that represents the area that I'm going to remove. What I need to do is I need to actually define the background, the area that is going to be used to fill in the area that we've selected here for the wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a spline shape at the beginning of my shot and I'm just going to select my background. Now I wanna select around the actor because I don't wanna use the data from the actor's bodies to fill in my background. Only the area from the set. Now, let's just track this forward. Okay, we've got our track. You see that it follows the background pretty well. All right, so I'm just going to, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna name my layer background, and I'm going to place it below the wire. All right, now I'm already parked on a frame where you can see the wire pretty well. I'm going to select my wire layer. I'm going to turn the gear on for the wire layer because this is this is a layer that we're going to be rendering. I'm going to turn the gear off for the background layer. Now, under the remove module, I'm going to click this button, render, and it should show me the results of my effect. There. Notice that the wire has been removed for that frame. Okay, let's render forward and we'll render everything. Now I'm gonna frame backwards, command or control arrow key, and see the results for every frame. Not bad, there's a couple of effects, there's a couple of uh, anomalies in there, but it's again, so dark and so fast that you can't see it that much. So I'm happy with this, I'm gonna click save, I'm gonna exit out of Mocha, and then under module renders, turn on render and make sure remove is selected. And with just a quick render here, I can play this back and you'll notice that you now will no longer see this wire in real time. In conclusion, Mocha Pro was an essential tool that allowed me and my editorial team to quickly comp screen, stabilize images and remove cables in our movie. Most importantly, Mocha Pro saved us loads of time and allowed us to focus on telling our story rather than the technical complexities of compositing.